I'm in M1, um, and I'm here to introduce our panelists. Um, and so my first question that I've been asking um, every time is um, to introduce themselves and their role at the University of Michigan, a medical school. Um, and so uh, um, Dean Brown, if you want to start. Hi, um, welcome everyone. I'm David Brown. I have the pleasure to serve as the Associate Dean and Associate Vice President for Health Equity and Inclusion. I'm also an Associate Professor of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery. I'm a Pediatric Otolaryngology Surgeon. Welcome. Hi everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Mary Blazik. I'm a Geriatric Psychiatrist and I also lead the Medical Humanities Path of Excellence in the Path of Excellence Program, which is a very cool longitudinal part of our curriculum. I was the advisor for a project of medical students to help older adults adjust to video visits for healthcare during the pandemic. Welcome, and we're very glad to answer your question. And so, Dr. Blazik, I'll start with you. Um, so, my first question is um, What do you recommend to students who may not have been involved previously in DEI efforts um, or any other advice or suggestions that you have for students that are interested in this area? First of all, the outpouring of efforts over the past year during the pandemic and all of the um, systemic racist uh, events that came to light during the pandemic has been tremendous here. And so if you're, I don't think you'll be able to hide from DEI. I think it's gonna be everywhere. Everyone is so deliberately wanting to um, understand how to incorporate it more and open to trying, learning and discussing and, and, and realizing that we all have a lot of opportunity for growth in this area. Any organization or program that you wanna join, you will be welcome, whether uh, it's uh, something brand new to you or something that you have experience in, and this will be a good way to get involved. Yeah, I agree. I, I say that yeah, if you're interested in being part of the Recycling Inclusion here, just uh, get involved, speak up, join any of the groups. You know, anyone can be a part of any of the groups, Black Medical Association, um, you don't have to identify as Black to be a part of it, but you may want to learn about the culture and the, the different uh, challenges and nuances. Speak up against inequities. I always say that medicine wasn't created to embrace the risk, the risk of inclusion or anti-racism, but we're at an inflection point in our lives, uh, in our country, in healthcare, where we're really starting to break down um, um, kind of the structures in, in medicine and rebuilding them to be more inclusive, to be inclusive of women, people of color, LGBTQ, people with disabilities. We all have multiple different identities and it's a great opportunity for you to share um, um, you, um, what would help you thrive. Um, our culture values inclusion, we want actions, we surface uh, issues and we work on them. And, and we love it when the students uh, help hold us accountable. Thank you. And a follow-up question is um, the free-for-all question, why Michigan? Uh, why did you choose to do your work in DEI here? Um, and, and Dr. Blazik, I'll, I'll throw it back to you. Well, I um, did not start out in academic medicine. I worked in community mental health out in the world and started teaching medical students. And there's a tremendous shortage of geriatric psychiatrists in the world. And so when I was invited to come here, I did and then discovered how much I love teaching and learning about teaching and finally saw a place, uh, the need for incorporating the arts and humanities into the curriculum here and boom, uh, we have now a path of excellence in the medical humanities. So I think this is a culture, an organization that values always improving, always striving to be better and innovating to new things. and. Um, so I hope to continue keep to keep growing. Thank you. And Dean Brown? You know, uh, I want to follow up on what uh, Dr. Basic just said, to keep growing. You know, one of the things I love about uh, Michigan medicine is that it embraces change. Uh, and they realize that we're all growing and that there's so many people who want to grow in this diverse equity inclusion space. You know, the issues from last year, including the healthcare disparities from COVID and the racism uh, that surfaced uh, last year, really, it, it was tragic. 
on so many levels, but it really brought our communities together, our community of our students, but our community of our entire academic medical center to say, now's the time that we make a difference. Um, I don't know if there's so, there are that many communities throughout the, the country in medicine that would do that. At least when I was in medical school, I don't think at that time, at least, that we would be able to do that. I also felt that our students, you know, in many respects led the way because you are coming into this with fresh eyes and see what's not, what, what's not perfect. And people speak up and we value that. Um, and so, um, you know, like Dean Raj said, we're not perfect, but what I really appreciate is that we're always trying to be better. And any institution that is wants to keep the status quo or just think that they're doing great things and that's all that needs to be done um, is not a place I want to be at. I'm a, I like dynamic um, institutions that are always evolving and trying to be better. And that's what this place is about. And before I give the closing comments, um, because we're shortly running out of time here, um, I just want to, you know, again, say that the floor is all yours. You can go ahead and, you know, put an X in the chat if you have a question. We really want to hear from you. Um, it can be, you know, any question. It could be related to DEI or even outside of that. Can maybe one of the panelists talk about a specific project um, that you and some students have implemented in the last year or two? Well, I'll start with um, talking about our program called Get Access, which is geriatric education for telehealth access. And when the pandemic started and there was a lockdown here, all our clinical care became virtual rather than in person. But as you can, as you probably know from your own lives, a lot of older adults don't have access to technology or were very fearful of technology. And so I put out a call to the M Response Corps volunteers. I said, I need help with this. Does anyone want to help? And a student named Kayla Pecan came and developed an entire pro training program to train medical student volunteers to coach older adults virtually by phone how to use uh, technology and virtual access so that they could have their healthcare visits and also visits with their family and friends. And it was hugely successful. And now she's doing a further expansion of this for her capstone project. So Dr. Brown, do you have another example to share? The Office for Health and Inclusion, which I have that pleasure of we have the innovation grants and um, you can get up to $5,000 uh, to do a diverse health inclusion innovation. And lately, um, many of them have been won by the medical students. Um, and so one of the projects was, one of the first ones in the first year that we gave it out was a couple of medical students who graduated, and Matt, well, not graduated, they matched this uh, just last week, so I'm so proud of them. They developed a program called CLIMB, which they um, were able to be innovative and teach uh, undergraduates and medical students kind of Spanish so that they, and, and uh, kind of Spanish culture so that uh, they could um, um, give more cultural uh, humble care in our, in our free clinic to Spanish speaking patients. We also have uh, different students who have won innovation awards for doing work for being more inclusive for individuals with disabilities or LGBTQ patients. We had some, one of our innovation awards that created new videos for taking care of transgender patients. And so when we evaluate these awards, we evaluate them based on innovation, the ability to have impact, and also the ability to be scaled up so that uh, more uh, um, um, individuals, other parts of the academic medical center can benefit from it. And lately, the vast majority of them have been student projects that anyone can apply. You can be faculty, staff, learner, any, any of the over 30,000 people who work at Michigan Medicine and learn here can apply but many of them have been won recently by medical students. Well, I just want to thank everyone for stopping by our Zoom session. Um, I hope that this was informative and um, inspiring. It's definitely inspiring to hear from our panelists tonight. Um, and I just want to kind of just put a plug in. Uh, we have more slam comments coming your way via Slack. So just keep an eye on our channel. Uh, we're working in the next two weeks, we're working on a guide to our DHE related efforts. Um, so um, just keep an eye on that. And any questions, you can direct them to me, to our panelists, uh, Natalie Vela, Emily, um, Becky, Sophie, there's a lot of people that you can reach. Um, so don't, um, don't be afraid to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.